Let's talk about resonance now. The beginning will be with just an ideal inductor in series with an ideal capacitor, an ILC circuit in series. The impedance of the inductor, J omega L, grows with the frequency, increases with frequency, while the impedance of a capacitor, negative J1 over omega C, decreases with frequency. The reactance of both omega L, the reactance of the inductor, and negative 1 over omega C, the reactance of the capacitor, can be plotted against frequency like so. And we notice that while the reactance of the inductor keeps growing forever with frequency, the reactance of the capacitor keeps decreasing with frequency while maintaining a negative value. At one frequency, omega naught, the magnitudes of both will have the same value, and being of opposite signs, their series combination is zero. What frequency is that? Let's add them up. J omega L minus J1 over omega C is zero. Let's find what frequency omega naught that is. It is the frequency at which the magnitudes of the reactants is the same. And we find that being 1 over the square root of LC. That is called the frequency of resonance or the resonant frequency. At that frequency, the series combination of the inductor and the capacitor are represented simply by a wire. They cancel out each other at that one frequency and a signal, a current of that frequency, 1 over root LC, will find itself a perfect highway with no impedance in its path. Any current of any other frequency will find some kind of impedance, but not that one of the frequency 1 over root LC. If this combination of a series LC behaves as a selective circuit, behaves as a filter. They are like a couple of bouncers in the path of currents, allowing in only that one current that has the right frequency, 1 over root LC, and presenting some opposition to any current of any other frequency. And you're thinking, wait a minute, LC? But any physical inductor, a coil, has some kind of resistance. That is true. So that means that what we really have is an RLC series circuit. What happens at resonance? The resonant frequency is still 1 over root LC. At that frequency, L and C cancel out, and all we're left with is just the resistance. So a current of that frequency, 1 over root LC, will see only the resistance, and any current of any other frequency will see that resistance plus the combined impedance of the inductor and the capacitor that will not be zero for those other frequencies. But we are asking that question, what happens to other frequencies? We want to have more information about that. And to answer that, we will take the problem over to the Laplace domain. The series RLC circuit will be represented by the Laplace impedances R, SL, and 1 over SC. No sources. Because there are no initial conditions, we are assuming there is no trapped energy either in the inductor or in the capacitor. The impedance of that branch is a transfer function between the current in the branch and the total of voltage in the branch, and that is given by the series combination of the three impedances, an expression that can be simplified to this one. That is the impedance transfer function between the current and the voltage in the branch. And that transfer function can be simplified even further by factoring out LC like so, and there we realize, hey, that transfer function, the impedance of the branch, has one pole at zero. Mm -hmm. So it's going to enter from the left with a negative slope of 20 decibels per decade. It's descending. And it has 
two complex conjugate zeros at this frequency, square root of 1 over LC. We knew that. Double. Fine. So that means that the plot looks like this. Coming from the left, with a slope of negative 20 decibels per decade, because of that uh, one um, pole at zero. And then at this frequency, 1 over root LC, we increased the slope by 40 decibels to a plus 20 decibels per decade. That is the amplitude body plot of the impedance of that series RLC. Let's plot how it looks for a specific set of values for the resistor, the inductor, and the capacitor. Let me use the unit values for the three of them. Canonical filter R1 ohm, L1 Henry, and C1 Farad. When we do that, this is the exact representation of the amplitude value of the impedance of that series group. It, in effect, has a decaying impedance that reaches a minimum at what frequency? 1 radians per second, which happens to be 1 over root of LC, 1, 1. Of course, that is 1. At that frequency, the impedance value is 0 decibels. But 0 decibels is 20 times the logarithm of 1. 1 ohm. This says the minimum value of the impedance is the resistance value, 1 ohm, 0 decibels. What happens if we have the same inductance and the same capacitance, but the resistance is 10 times bigger? Allow me. Look. You say, hey, we have the same resonant frequency, 1 radians per second. Of course, I haven't changed L or C. By this time, the curve looks way wider. That's right. Many more frequencies are allowed in with minor impedances in their paths. This is a less selective filter. And the minimum value, the minimum value is higher too. The minimum value is at the frequency 1 at which the inductor and the capacitor cancel out each other and we are left with 10 ohms. 20 times the logarithm of 10 ohms that is, of course, 20 decibels. C, 20 decibels, 10 ohms. Let's try once more, but this time with a tiny resistance in the path, 0.1 ohms. Look what happens. A much thinner characteristic, a filter that will be very selective and will filter out very drastically any frequency that is not the one that is not 1 over root LC. What is the value here? Oh, negative 20 decibels, and that is actually 20 decibels multiplied by a logarithm of 0 0.1, which is negative 20. That's what it is. The minimum value of the impedance, again, is the resistance, but the resistance is pretty small this time. So we say it seems as if the quality or selectivity of the filter depends on the resistance. The more resistance the RLC circuit has, the less selective it is, the, less, uh, the lesser the quality of the filter. We need to quantify those. Let's go back to the 111 filter and define what is bandwidth. The frequency range between those two frequencies and which the impedance has grown from its minimum value 3 decibels on either side define what is called the bandwidth of the filter. If the impedance is 3 decibels more, that means that any frequency in this range will have its power reduced by less than half, less than 50%. If there were music signals, they could be heard by the human ear, by the human hearing system. So that is the bandwidth, a definition. The bandwidth is the difference that range, the difference between omega 2 and omega 1, and we call those the half 
power frequencies, the frequencies at which the impedance has grown by 3 decibels on either side of the resonant frequency. We still need to find them. Selectivity and quality factor. We begin in this introduction of concepts using a very strange example, this one. If this person donates a hundred dollars to charity, it's because he is extremely generous, you agree with me? But if it's Mr. Bill Gates, sorry, Mr. Gates, who donates a hundred dollars to charity, he would never give so little. He would not be Bill Gates, the philanthropist, right? Do you agree with me? It is not the absolute value of the donation, but where is that donation coming from? Let's define a generosity factor. That's going to be amount of the donation divided by the monthly income of the donor. That tells us how much of a generosity we have there. In the same way, we will define selectivity and quality factor of a filter. It is not the same to have a filter with a bandwidth of a thousand radians per second. That is a bandwidth, that is the range of frequencies that will go through. But the filter is tuned to resonate at a thousand radians per second. You see how poor filter this is? It has a bandwidth of a thousand and its frequency of resonance is a thousand too. But if we have another filter that has the same bandwidth, a thousand radians per second, but it's tuned to resonate at one giga radians per second, that is a fine filter. So you see, it's not the bandwidth what tells us if the filter is very selective, but rather the relationship between that bandwidth and the corresponding frequency of resonance. That is what we call the quality factor of the filter, a ratio between the frequency of resonance omega naught and the bandwidth omega 2 minus omega 1. This is uh, a number without units, of course, it's an abstract number. Definition, bandwidth and half power frequencies omega 1 and omega 2. If the impedance is 3 decibels higher at omega 1 and omega 2, it is because the magnitude of the impedance has grown by root 2, is 41% bigger. What? Let me show you. If we compare the impedance at the frequency of resonance, that is Z sub M, the minimum value of the impedance, and at 3 decibels, yeah, the impedance is Z3 decibels, which is bigger, right? Is 3 decibels bigger, so that means we divide, take the logarithm, multiply that times 20, and that is 3 decibels of difference. Let's find out how much bigger 3 dB Z is than ZM. Anti-logarithm tells us that indeed the magnitude of the impedance at 3 decibels is root 2 times the minimum value of the impedance. But remember, the minimum value of the impedance in a series RLC circuit is just the resistance at that frequency, right? Then, that means that at the half power frequency, either omega 1 or omega 2, I'm going to call that omega x in general, the value of the absolute value of the impedance, that is square root of r square plus the reactant square, that is equal to root 2 times the minimum value, that is root 2 times r, the resistance. Let's solve this equation for omega x to find what are omega 1 and omega 2, they have power frequencies. Square both sides, like so, and move this r square from the right side over to the left hand side subtracting, and we have a simpler equation. r square is this term square. Hmm, take square root on both sides, of course you have plus and minus when you take square root. This is a quadratic equation in omega x, but we have two such equations, one for the positive sign and one for the negative sign. 
each quadratic equation will give us two solutions, like so. Four possible omega ones and omega two, but you know what? Out of those four, only two are positive. The other two are eliminated. The greater one is going to be omega two. The smaller one is going to be omega O one. Those are the half power frequencies for the series RLC filter. Let's copy those formulas over over here and say the bandwidth is going to be omega 2 minus omega 1. All of this side is the same. If we subtract them, what we're going to get is just do all the simplifications and check that operation is just R over L. So the bandwidth tells us in a series RLC circuit how much bigger the resistance is than the inductance. Very interesting. Eh? Very interesting. So the higher the quality of the coil, the less resistance per Henry it will have, and the smaller the bandwidth that the filter you can assemble with that coil. Very interesting. The quality factor, by the way, was defined as omega naught divided by the bandwidth, right? But the bandwidth now is the ratio of the resistance by the inductance. How much bigger R is than L? If we substitute that bandwidth here, mm, we get this very interesting formula. The one in the middle I like the most. The quality factor is omega L divided by R and the resonance frequency. Say that in words. And the resonance and the resonant frequency, the quality factor is just how much bigger the reactance of the inductor is than the resistance. Hmm. In reality, at the resonant frequency, remember, the absolute value of the reactance of the inductor and the capacitor are equal. So either reactance ratio to R in absolute value is the quality factor. Further simplification has this formula in terms of the three parameters. 1 over R, square root of L over C. Something very important needs to be highlighted. These formulas for omega 1, omega 2, the bandwidth, the quality factor, they work only for the series RLC circuit. Do not go willy-nilly trying to apply those formulas to some other configuration without verification of validity. Careful with that, hey? This time we have again an ideal inductor and an ideal capacitor, but they are in parallel. The admittance of the capacitor J omega C increases with frequency while the admittance, remember, I'm not talking of impedance, the admittance of the inductor, which is negative, negative J 1 over omega L decreases with frequency. The total admittance of the circuit, the sum of both, YC plus YL. At a certain frequency, when you add them up, they cancel out and the total admittance will be zero. Zero admittance, infinite impedance. That means there is a frequency omega naught at which that pair becomes an open circuit. Interesting, eh? What frequency is that? The frequency of resonance of the parallel LC circuit, which, by the way, we call that a tank circuit. That admittance is J omega C minus 1 J divided by omega L. That has to be 0, which implies the frequency omega naught is 1 over root LC. Same as with the series RLC circuit. And the resonant frequency, the tank, is an open circuit. In other words, it blocks signals of that frequency while it allows other signals of different frequency pass through. The coil, in reality, has some resistance. 
If we draw the coil as an inductance in parallel with the resistance, what we have is a parallel RLC circuit. And the frequency of resonance, 1 over root LC, the L and the C cancel out, they become an open circuit, and all we see is just the resistive part of the trio. And that resonant frequency, all that remains is the resistance. In a similar way as we found out uh, that for the RLC circuit, the series one, the parallel RLC circuit, also has some simple formulas for things like the resonant frequency, 1 over root LC, the same one, and uh, the half power frequencies, omega 1 and omega 2, the bandwidth is 1 over RC, the quality uh, factor, again, which is the same as before, omega naught over the bandwidth becomes omega naught RC. Remember, these formulas apply only to the parallel RLC circuit. They do not apply to any other configuration, so please don't go applying them left and right without thinking first. Quality factor now. Again, Q, a proper definition. Observe one thing. Q for us has been so far the reactive power of a circuit in a C steady state. But this Q is a different one. Mind the context to realize if Q is quality factor of a filter or reactive power of an AC steady state circuit. We have obtained formulas for Q, the quality factor, for the series RLC and for the parallel RLC circuit. In general, the quality factor of a filter is proportional to the peak energy stored either in the inductor or in the capacitor. 2 pi times that divided by the energy dissipated in the resistive part of the circuit in one cycle. And that is a general definition for the quality factor of any filter. For filters with a quality factor Q above or equal to 10, we call them high Q filters. In those cases, the half power frequencies can be computed approximately much more easily this way. Omega 1 is the resonant frequency minus half the bandwidth, and omega 2 is the resonant frequency plus half the bandwidth. Easy. Now a summary of formulas that appear in almost every textbook on electric circuits theory. I have borrowed this sequence from the Alexander and Sadiku excellent textbook. Series RLC circuits on the left, parallel RLC circuits on the right. The resonant frequency omega naught is the same in both cases, 1 divided by the root of LC. The quality factor, well, the quality factor, which is omega naught divided by the bandwidth, becomes for the series RLC circuit reactance of the inductor divided by the resistor, or reactance of the capacitor, which is the same, divided by the resistor either way. For the parallel one, when we uh, compare is the resistance by the impedance of the inductor, or the resistance by the impedance of the capacitor. The bandwidth, again, is omega naught divided by Q from the definition of Q we gave before. We have the quality factor and the resonant frequency. We have the bandwidth. The half power frequencies omega 1 and omega 2 are given by this simplified formula as a function of the resonant frequency omega naught and the quality factor Q. For filters, with a quality factor greater or equal to 10. If those two frequencies are computed easily with omega naught plus or minus half the bandwidth. Another way of looking at resonance. Let's consider circuits that are neither series RLC or parallel RLC. What happens in those cases? We need a definition for resonance for those more general cases. 
It is the frequency, if such a frequency exists, at which the whole circuit seen from a given port looks purely resistive. Or what is the same? Is there a frequency for which the angle of the impedance is zero? It is the same, right? If the angle of the impedance is zero, the impedance is just resistive. Is there such a frequency? Better, let's work this out with a numerical exercise. Let's consider the circuit below this one. If the inductor is 10 millihenries, the capacitance is half a millifarad, a huge capacitance, and the resistance is 20 ohms. It is important to emphasize that this is neither a series RLC nor a parallel RLC. But here we still can find what is the Laplace transform impedance of the group. It looks something like that. You can always watch the companion video, tutorial video on resonance in which I go into this exercise in great detail, but this is only the highlights. Uh, for that one, if I plot the uh, amplitude and the, f and the angle of that impedance, I get uh, this. And in there, we can observe that there is a zero crossing of the angle of the impedance right here. At what frequency? 100, 200, 300, 400, and something. In the tutorial a video, I compute that frequency as 436 radians per second. And look at that at that zero crossing, at that resonant frequency, at the frequency in which the impedance is purely resistive, the absolute value of the impedance has a minimum in magnitude. And that minimum, by the way, is zero decibels. You say, but zero decibels for an impedance means the impedance magnitude is one ohm, but the resistor was 20 ohms. What gives? To find out, watch the companion video, the tutorial of resonant circuits. And that is all for now. Thank you very much. I hope you profited from this video. I enjoyed making it. Thank you very much. I hope to see you again in the tutorial video.